Okay, now for question number nine from practice paper C, Pure Mathematics 2, International A-Level. Now this is a brand new topic, and as you can see from the <laughs> terrible formatting here, I kind of um, made this question up myself. But it's based upon a brand new topic, which is um, about how to sketch the gradient function. Now, this question here, um, we're given a, 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 a function without the equation of the function. And they tell us that figure 5 shows a sketch of the curve with equation y equals f of x where p and q are turning points. p and q are turning points, okay, stationary points. Of y equals f of x, as you can see p is a, ma a maximum and q is a minimum. And for values of x greater than the x value at q, okay, so, um, the x-axis becomes an asymptote to y equals f of x. So this, this cuts through the x-axis here, but after q, it goes close to the x-axis without actually touching it. In the pair of axes below, means in this pair there, it's blank, um, draw a sketch of y equals f dash of x, the gradient function of y equals f of x, labeling any points where the graph touches the x-axis and any turning points or asymptotes. Okay, so now, what we've got to do here is think very clearly. This is a topic where many students and some teachers as well get confused. But it's nothing to be confused about because basically we are sketching the gradient function of this. So it's kind of like when, if you do physics, um, when you think about um, you have a distance time graph, what's happening to the speed. You have an acceleration, you have a, a speed time graph, what's happening to the acceleration. So for example here, we can see here that the gradient is positive, okay? So the gradient function has to be above the x-axis, okay? It has to be above the x-axis if the gradient is positive. So for sure, between zero and p, where the gradient ha is a positive gradient, the gradient function will be above the x-axis. It doesn't mean it's going to be increasing, but it's going to be positive, okay? And between p and q, you can see the gradient is negative. So the gradient function is going to be definitely below the x-axis because it has to have a negative value. Okay, so the gradient function is going to be below the x-axis between p and q. And then after q, it becomes positive again. You can see it's a positive gradient here. Okay, so the kind of places where something's happening or that some kind of big changes are taking place are the, the, the one of the points are the turning points. So I'm going to draw a line from p down okay so that's one place where something special is going to happen and at q the other turning point something uh, somewhere else now there's other points which are also important and one of those points is over here somewhere now you can see here the gradient is decreasing it's zero it's negative and it's it's, it's like not very steep, then it gets steeper and steeper, so it's getting, it's, it's, it's falling, the gradient is falling, okay, so basically the, you're going to be on the negative side, it's going to be getting lower, but it reaches a point here somewhere, somewhere over here, where it stops decreasing and starts to increase, it's still a negative, but the gradient is increasing, it's not so steep anymore, and it's moving towards becoming zero from negative towards zero so the gradient is increasing so it's the gradient is falling and then it's rising so this is called a point of inflection on this graph and it's not a point of inflection like where the gradient becomes zero okay which is like for example when we have y equals x cubed the gradient becomes zero and then it becomes positive again this is a different type of point of inflection okay where the gradient changes from decreasing to increasing or you can also have another point like over here see the gradient is zero it starts to increase but then it's positive but it starts to decrease it starts to get again towards zero again so there's another point of inflection somewhere in this area here where the gradient is changing from being increasing to decreasing it's still positive but it's it's increasing and then it becomes decreasing here the gradient is negative because it's falling but the gradient is going from um, decreasing to increasing still negative 
but it's increasing from it's, it's like more negative to less negative to less negative to less negative to zero okay so these are also points that are important important which will show certain changes taking place in the graph okay so I'm going to mark these points as well so I can see them exactly on this graph okay so those are the, the, the points that you got to look for when you're drawing your gradient function okay and you got to think very clearly okay it's very actually it's not very difficult but a lot of people just get confused by it just have to think clearly so here the gradient is positive so between 0 and P for sure the, the gradient function has to be above the x-axis it has to be a positive gradient but what you can see is the gradient at P is 0 so for sure the gradient at P is going to be 0 so it's going to touch the x-axis at this point here where P is okay the gradient function is going to become 0 here and it's also going to become 0 here so it's going to go through these two points for sure okay because the gradient is 0 in these two points okay and this part of the curve the gradient has to be above the x-axis between P and Q the gradient has to be the gradient function has to be below the x-axis because it's a negative gradient the graph is falling whenever the graph is falling it's going to the gradient function is going to be below the x-axis whenever the graph is rising the gradient function is going to be above the x-axis doesn't mean it's going to be rising above it it's going to be above it now let's think about what's going to happen here and here we can see that this is a point where the gradient stops falling and starts to rise stops falling and starts to rise okay so what's happening here is the gradient is quite um, high it's like a steep gradient and then it's getting less steep so we can say the gradient is decreasing so if this is the gradient function its value starts high and it starts getting lower as it goes towards P so let's say it goes something like this I'm trying to be as neat as I can okay I know it's not that easy for me but I'll try my best okay so we know that it's, it's falling the gradient is falling and it reaches zero at this point okay so it's a zero gradient here okay and now the gradient is negative okay it's zero at this point and now the gradient becomes negative okay and the gradient is it's 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 like um, a negative but a low negative value okay because it's like say the gradient here is it's, it's a small negative value but it's, get, it's it's starting to get more steeper in the negative side so for example if the gradient here was minus two then it's going to be minus three then minus four then minus five it's going lower the gradient is getting more negative okay but then it reaches a point where it stops decreasing and starts to increase so when you have a point of inflection that's a point where the gradient function turns that's a turning point on the gradient function because it stops becoming decreasing and it starts to increase now you can see the gradient gets less negative and it starts moving towards zero so it's like a turning point and it goes up it goes up until it hits zero at Q okay and it's zero at this point okay so it hits zero at these two points it turns because it's going from decreasing to increasing the gradient is going from decreasing to increasing at this asymptote um, asymptote at this point of inflection I mean and here again you see the gradient is increasing it's it's a positive gradient here you see at this point up to Q it's negative from P to Q after P up to Q it's negative just before Q it's negative see from P to Q this area it's negative before P it's positive because it's, it's rising okay it's rising but the rate at which it's rising is getting less you see until it becomes horizontal zero gradient and then the rate at which it's falling is getting more so it's falling okay and then when it reaches this point here okay it's, it's getting more and more negative but it starts to you see it starts to uh, change from decreasing to increasing not negative to positive but from decreasing to increasing so it's getting lower and lower the gradient but then 
it starts to increase, but it's still negative, but it's increasing until it reaches Q, at which point the gradient becomes zero, and after Q, it's now positive, so on the positive side. Okay, and it's increasing, but then it hits a point where, at this point, it reaches its maximum value in this area, and it starts to decrease again. It starts to get lower, but it's still positive. So it starts to get lower, so its, it's value gets less and less, but still positive, and it's kind of getting closer to the x-axis without touching. It's an asymptote, so it's always going to be heading towards it, so the gradient is always going to be getting um, smaller and smaller, but it never actually touches it because it's asymptote, so it will never touch it. So that's how you can draw it, see, this uh, gradient function, okay? So you've got to be very careful the way you think about such a question, okay? And just think very clearly what's happening. Is it rising? Then it's going to be positive, it's going to be above the x-axis. But how is it rising? It's rising at a slower rate, so that means it's heading towards zero. So mark the zero points, the turning points, and that will help you picture it. Mark the asymptotes, and it will give you an idea. So if I mark the zero points and the asymptotes, okay, you know that there's going to be an asymptote here because it's falling, so it's going to be falling, but then it starts to rise because it's, the, it's, it's decreasing, then it starts to increase. So it's decreasing, then it starts to increase. So you mark this point, so you mark the point where it's zero again, Again, there's another asymptote because it's rising, and then at that point it starts to, to it's not the gradient is is increasing, and then it starts to decrease. It's not becoming negative, but it's just getting the gradient is getting less sh uh, more shallow, less steep. So it's it's increasing, then it starts to decrease. It's getting more steep, and then it's getting less steep. It's getting more the gradient is increasing, and then it starts to decrease. So that's uh, the asymptote. So once you once you've actually marked these points, you can kind of picture what's going to happen to the graph. Right, you can kind of picture, just follow those points and see when you have an asymptote like this, you see if it's approaching the asymptote in this way, it's going to be a negative gradient. So it's going to be like this because it's a negative gradient, but it's getting bigger. Okay, it's getting bigger. It's a negative gradient. It's getting, it's like, say that's minus three, minus two, minus one, minus a half, minus, it's still negative. So it'll still be on the, below the x-axis, but it'll be getting bigger. But in this case, what we have here, it's approaching the asymptote from below, so its gradient is positive. Okay, so it's above the gradient function will be above the x-axis, but it's getting closer and closer to zero, so it's, it's falling, getting closer to zero all the time. Okay, I hope that is clear for you. This is a topic which is new, and um, you know, uh, it's actually something that you have to just think a bit clearly about, and you'll be fine. Okay.